Hey everybody! So excited to be here with all of you to celebrate 30 years of epic entertainment experiences from Blizzard. And of course, out of all of those, the one that's nearest and dearest to my heart is the World of Warcraft expansion, Shadowlands. And that's what we're here today to talk about. The development experience for Shadowlands over the course of last year was unforgettable for all sorts of reasons. But it's also something that really has taught the team, taught all of us, a lot of lessons about World of Warcraft and how we can make the game better for all of you going forward. Because Shadowlands wasn't just the product of our development team's efforts last year, it was the product of your efforts as well. It was the product of a conversation between us, the development team, and all of you the players, the community, who inhabit this world that we're the custodians of. The beta for Shadowlands started earlier than any beta for a past expansion that I can recall. And over the course of last year, we had tons of folks in our beta giving us feedback, reporting bugs. But we also had even more people just in the community in general, following developments, following updates, watching YouTube videos, chiming in on Reddit threads, on our forums, on social media, everywhere else, letting us know what was exciting, what was concerning, what you didn't understand, what you were worried about, what you were happy about, and more. And all of that helped shape Shadowlands, and I could not be more proud of where we ended up. And it's been amazing seeing everyone jumping into this new world that we've crafted together and having an amazing time over the last couple of months. That's a conversation, that's a process that I would like to carry forward into 2021 and for that to be a baseline for how we build World of, World of Warcraft going forward. So as we're here today talking about the next major update, what you're going to hear about shortly is where we're headed in terms of the world, in terms of the story, in terms of these epic characters we've just been introduced to, major villains like the Jailer and Sylvanas, and what's up with Anduin anyway. But we're going to talk a bit less, however, about systems. We have tons to share there, but the way we need to work on our systems, as we've learned, is, of course, by first seeing how they're playing out in your hands. We couldn't really plan what we were going to do with Legendaries or where Torghast was going to go or what was going to change about Soulbinds without having the experience of millions of players dealing with those systems and letting us know what you think. And so I am pleased and excited to say that when we look at our systems, unlike in some past expansions at this point, we're not seeing anything that needs to be completely overhauled or replaced. What we see are solid foundations that are in many cases in need of iteration and upon which we can build a structure that will sustain us throughout the entirety of Shadowlands to come. So that's a conversation that's going to come when our public test realm goes live and we'll have lots more information to share with you there. Now, what we are gonna talk about, and boy do we have a lot of exciting stuff for you, is the first major content update for Shadowlands. Let me turn it over to my colleague, Jeremy Fiesel, who can tell you all about it. Hi everybody, I'm Jeremy Fiesel. I am a designer on WoW, and it is my pleasure to get to introduce to you today a first look at what's next for World of Warcraft Shadowlands. So let's talk a little bit about what we've accomplished so far. The champions of Azeroth have stepped foot in this otherworldly space known as the Shadowlands, the afterlife for all souls from Azeroth and beyond. Within the Shadowlands, we have met new allies, and we've fought a ton of new and interesting new enemies. We've joined covenants, and we've gained great power. And in this time, we have been able to deal with some of the immediate threats to our new covenant allies. We have taken down the Gorm and the Drust in Ardenweald, and the Forsworn in Bastion, and ultimately, we've been able to add some stability back to each of our new allies home zones. Within the Shadowlands, we have also been able to help out many of the denizens that are undergoing this major lack of anima by sending anima back out into the world, reinvigorating both our allies as well as the military forces of each of our covenants so they can take the fight back to their enemies. And as a culminating element to all of these things, we've been able to take out one of the Jailer's main lieutenants, the traitorous Sire Denathrius in Castle Nathria. And yet, behind all of these things is the looming, dark and mysterious figure of the Jailer. So what do we really know about the Jailer's dark designs up until this point? Well, 
We know that the jailer is in charge of the Maw, a dark and forbidden place that we can't spend even a moment too long in before getting unceremoniously swept out by the jailer's forces. We know that the Maw has had this huge influx of souls, allowing the Jailer to gain massive amounts of power, as well as anima thanks to the actions of Sire Denathrius. This has allowed the Maw to grow in great proportion, something we've been able to physically see just by looking out past Ouroboros into the darkness. In addition, every time we have tried to step foot into the Maw, we've been watched unmercilessly by the Eye of the Jailer. We've never been able to get a solid foothold there. We have spent some time in Torghast, the Tower of the Damned, and we've rescued some very prominent souls. But again, we've never been able to get a solid and consistent foothold there and make any real progress. The Jailer remains this mystery of the Shadowlands, and exactly what his dark designs are for the afterlife are still unknown. This is the story we will be investigating and our first major content update for World of Warcraft Shadowlands, entitled Chains of Domination. Now you can imagine with a name like that, we're going to be very centered around the Jailer's forces and his plans. What do him and his champion Sylvanas have in store for the rest of us? And how does this influence our allies in Ardenweald, in Bastion, and elsewhere? The Jailer will make his first attacks, showing his hand, and will be forced to defend our brand new allies as we see what the Jailer's designs for the Shadowlands truly are. Let's take another look at that cinematic showing what fate has in store for Anduin in Chains of Domination. Look around you! What makes you believe you're not just a weapon? to achieve his end. Enough! Join our cause, or be made to serve. Right now, you hold all the power. Make your choice, Sylvanas Windrunner. Despite all our efforts, the Maw continues to grow. What if Denathrius' treachery is irreparable? The Primus is lost, and Bastion cannot save the Shadowlands alone. None of this should have happened. Perhaps the Winter Queen could. My Archon, a living soul, seeks an audience. A mortal? A king. By all our measures, one who has spent his life striving for justice. One who would give anything to serve his people. One whose heart is true. Very well. He may approach. Step forward. My Ascended have spoken of you. The King held captive in the Maw. That prison could not hold me forever. Why have you come to Bastion? You have a key that I need. You. Will release this soul from your grasp. No. He is bound to me, just as you were sought to bind your own brother.
endlessly. Three keys to aim. Then they will see. Death was never meant to be changed. There's a lot to unpack there, but as you can imagine, we're not going to take a strike like that sitting down. We're going to call in the forces of all four of the Shadowlands Covenants. For the first time in years, they will all come together, now reinvigorated by Anima and by our actions within the Shadowlands, to take the fight directly to the Jailer. Within the Maw, we will uncover brand new, never-before-seen areas. We'll also be fighting off some new and never-before-seen enemies, of course, and naturally be uncovering some brand new Maw-themed rewards while we're at it. Our return to the Maw includes not only a chance for us to push back against the dark designs of the Jailer in areas that previously were very forbidding for us, where we, we really weren't able to spend very much time there. Having a secure, solid foothold with all four covenants allows us to push back against that oppressive force. We'll be able to stop the Eye of the Jailer in its tracks, exploring areas that we were unable to explore before, and our mounts will once again even hear our call within the Maw. The Maw will not only include some areas that we have seen previously, now with our new allies of the Covenants changing things up there, but also some never before seen sections. Let's talk for a second about the largest of those sections. So in the finale of that cinematic, you saw that the Jailer had sent his chains off out of the Maw and into the darkness. What he found there, that landmass shown there at the very end of that cinematic, is a landmass known as Corthia, and it makes up the largest new section of the Maw. Corthia is an ancient space that was lost in the in-between. It has its own strange creatures and wildlife that inhabit it, but it's also inhabited by some of the characters we've previously seen in Ouroboros, including the attendants and the protectors, and some of their city structures. And very similar to Ouroboros, it is filled with mysteries, the likes of which the Shadowlands has yet to uncover. It is these ancient mysteries that the Jailer is truly after, the secrets of this strange group that we've only barely hinted at, known as the First Ones. Heading back into this area will allow us to explore all of these new sections, entertain new content, meet new allies, and face off against new foes. And in addition, we will also see some brand new rewards. Some of the new rewards we'll find within the Maw include this Maw-themed undead horse and a Maw hand mount that is actually a giant severed hand of domination that you'll ride on the wrist section of in a really creepy and cool manner. And of course, there will be Maw-themed battle pets to collect as well, including your very own minion of domination. But our true purpose within the Maw is not just to collect battle pets. That's just a part of it. The true purpose of bringing all four of the Covenants together within the Maw, of course, is to be taking the attack directly to the Jailer's doorstep, the central area where the Jailer has holed up with all of his main minions is going to be our focus here as we raid the Sanctum of Domination. The Sanctum of Domination will be a 10 boss raid and you'll finally be able to face off against the terrible Terra Group that I'm sure has kicked you out of Torghast more times than you want to mention at this point. You'll be able to take all of your allies and take the fight directly back to it. We'll also be facing off against the creature that is the actual eye of the Jailer and figure out really what is the Jailer's eye here. Those of you that were fans of the lore of the Titan Keeper Odin might have some interest in that particular fight. The Jailer's Inner Sanctum, naturally, is a place where some of the worst of the worst souls were sent for the Jailer's personal torment. And we'll be seeing some of those souls here as well. Really looking forward to hearing who you think will show up in the Jailer's personal torment sanctum. Of course, any raid that features minions, servants, and soldiers of the cold dark like this one is going to have to feature our old nemesis, Kel'Thuzad. And finally, 
the culmination of the raid. At long last, we will be taking the fight directly to Sylvanas Windrunner, the Banshee Queen herself. The finale of this fight is going to change the future of the Shadowlands, but we're not going to spoil that for you today. However, I can't wait for you to see what happens at the end. But the Sanctum of Domination is not the only Sanctum of the Jailer. We'll be seeing additional updates to Torghast, the Tower of the Damned, including the unlocking of brand new, never before seen wings. These wings have a brand new art kit, as well as new floors and new floor layouts, and should feel like something you haven't seen in Torghast up until now. You'll be facing off against brand new foes with dastardly ways in order to stop your ascent, new traps to trip you up, and of course, to help us fight against all of these dastardly minions of the Jailer, brand new game-changing powers will be available as well. Moving on to additional updates within Chains of Domination, fans of the Operation Mechagon Mega Dungeon from our previous patches, we'll be happy to learn that we are once again bringing back the concept of the Mega Dungeon. A Mega Dungeon is an eight boss dungeon, epic in scale, and always has some unique and interesting loot that you can't find anywhere else. The Mega Dungeon for Chains of Domination is gonna be focused around the enigmatic traders that we first met in Ouroboros, the Brokers. The Broker Mega Dungeon is a large broker trading city with portals, an auction house, and various different broker cartels that have made it their home. We're going to be learning more about broker culture and meeting some new and different kinds of brokers that we haven't seen up until now. This is an eight boss dungeon and in Chains of Domination will be available as mythic only for now. Within the broker mega dungeon, we will be facing off against brand new broker cartel members, including dastardly broker assassins and four armed broker guards. The second half of the dungeon, as we start to exit the broker trading city, will feature a heist section, as we chase a broker that has stolen an artifact and plans to use it for his own purposes. As we chase this broker through the heist section, he'll take us through a number of different portals that take us to a lot of different, very varied locations where we fight a number of different bosses. One of these fights, of course, is against none other than an infinite pirate dragon. I trust that needs no explanation, so let's move on to the rewards. The rewards of this mega dungeon include things that we will only see within broker culture, some very special broker pets, including a broker themed cat. We can capture some of the rats that scurry around within the broker trading city, and we'll get to see one of the pets that the brokers actually use as a currency, these strange worms that they found on another world and have scintillating eyes that are gem-like. It's sort of like a living sign of your wealth for the high ends of the broker cartels. You might be able to purchase one of those within the dungeon or fight an enemy in order to obtain one of them. And we'll be able to obtain the broker's special and interesting disc mount what they fly around their trading city with. In addition, there's going to be a dazzling array of different weaponry for you to collect as well. Now let's move on to updates to some of our covenant systems. We've been fighting hard to gain renown with our covenants, gain soul binds and additional conduits. We'll be expanding upon a lot of these systems some of the ideas that we're thinking about include adding additional conduits, different conduit types, and expanding the soulbind system. Our general goal here is to give you more options in terms of how you specialize your character within your covenant and how you gain additional power levels. We're very early on in the ideation phase here, and we'd love to hear from you if you want to take to the forums and tell us how you would like to see your power grow within your covenant. Patch 9.1 also brings with it flying, something that we mentioned a while back and we're sticking to it. There's no rep grind associated with flying. You simply just need to continue completing activities for your covenant and your covenant story chapters will unlock flying for you automatically. But we're not simply going to be unlocking flying in Chains of Domination. No, we want to do everything heavily covenant themed because it's all about working for your covenants. So completing the flying will also unlock a new specialized flying mount specific to your covenant. For the Kyrians, activating Anima to the Eternal Forge has allowed your stewards to once again produce this powerful flying centurion that hasn't been seen in ages. For the Night Fae, 
activating wild seeds with anima that were thought lost to the drought, will reawaken our powerful ally in the Wolf Serpent. From the Maldraxians, the Necrolords naturally go to their natural environment, throw a saddle on one of the giant corpse flies buzzing around their backyard, and send that on into combat. There's one thing that you do know, they're not going to be afraid of the stench of death. And for the Venthyr, activating anima within Revendreth has allowed us to empower these stoneborn brutes, giving us anima-infused stoneborn allies as our brand new flying mounts. But that's not all. Continuing to advance your covenant and your renown will also unlock a set of cosmetic armor. Cosmetic armor sets can be worn by any armor type, from cloth to plate, and they can be mixed and matched with any of your transmog outfits if you want to take just pieces of them, producing a variety of different unique outfit possibilities. The cosmetic armor set for the Kyrian is stylized after a Kyrian courier who might be rushing across the fields of Bastion with a missive. It's very lightweight, it's very airy. For the Night Fae, your cosmetic outfit will be themed around the Forest Defenders and includes many natural wildlife elements, including the horns of the Great Stag and the leaves of the various flora around Ardenweald. As you can see, the colors here are actually themed after the seasons as well. For the Necrolords, we went all the way back to the Warcraft 3 initial idea of the Necromancer in this classically inspired Necromancer set updated with Necrolord colors. Everybody who's a Necrolord will finally get to also have a little bit of Necromancer in them as well. And finally, for the Venthyr, no Venthyr transmog set would truly be complete without a set of finery just waiting for the next Venthyr fancy party to break out. Venthyr players will be able to obtain these fancy outfits for whenever you need to head off to a ball. Chains of Domination will also herald the beginning of Shadowlands Season 2, where we will be seeing the addition of a brand new domination-themed affix for Mythic Plus, an item level increase across the board in terms of available item levels that you can pick up by doing just about anything in the Shadowlands, We'll also be seeing the beginning of PvP Season 2. And something special in this PvP season that we're looking for is an Honor Talent refresh. The idea here is to take a look at some of our unused or underutilized Honor Talents and freshen them up a bit, change things around in terms of the PvP metagame. We'll also be seeing the introduction of Seasonal Rewards. These include both brand new colors of the Gladiator and Mythic Plus achievement mounts, as well as our new Vicious Mounts. In this case, the Vicious Mount is... the Gorm. The Gorm was already pretty vicious, so slapping a couple of pieces of armor on that and sending them out into combat was a natural thing for the forces of the Alliance and Horde to do. All right, let's take a second to recap everything coming at you in Chains of Domination. First, we've got some major story quests, including a lot of the main characters of the Shadowlands that are centered most specifically around the designs and plans of the Jailer and his attacks on our allies in our covenants. We will be taking revenge by taking the fight directly to the Jailer in the Maw and forming a permanent presence there with all four covenants. We'll be exploring some never-before-seen sections of the Maw, including this new area known as Corthia and its various mysteries. We will be taking the fight directly to the Jailer himself in the Sanctum of Domination raid, which has the final boss as Sylvanas Windrunner. And we'll be making updates to Torghast, including some never-before-seen wings, floors, creatures, and powers. We'll be introducing a new Mega Dungeon, themed around the Brokers as a floating broker trading city, with new bosses to fight there and some very unique loot to obtain. We're going to be expanding upon the Conduits and Soulbind systems, and adding additional choice and power to your presence within your Covenant. And alongside that, we'll be seeing some brand new Covenant rewards, including Covenant-themed flying mounts and Covenant-themed cosmetic armor sets, both of which will be available in a variety of different colors to collect. And finally, we'll be seeing the launch of Shadowlands Season 2 and everything that entails. Thanks everybody for checking out our Shadowlands update. We've got a lot of really cool stories to tell still here in the Shadowlands, and we can't wait to get this content into your hands. From everybody on the World of Warcraft team, we hope you enjoy Chains of Domination, 
and we'll see you in the Shadowlands.